Okay, everybody, welcome back to the wide world of air conditioning. Uh, another day of calls. Uh, try to film something if we can. Uh, I got a what I think will be a capacitor here first thing in the morning. We'll see. Uh, got some interesting stuff. Did some interesting stuff the other day. Uh, Ralph, you were talking to me on the phone, and we were talking about some of the odd stuff we've done. And I ended up at the back of like a Greyhound bus repairing an R22 system. What's what was a carrier transit cold system? I uh, finally got it going, but uh, <laughs> it was an interesting one. I'll say that. But uh, at the end of the day today, we might have a two-door prep table R134. So all sorts of weird stuff happening. Hopefully, we'll have a bunch of fascinating stuff to look at. Okay, we have a Linux. This is not a very old unit, but it won't start. I hear the buzzing of a contactor. But uh, let's open the door and we we'll see if we got a busted capacitor. See our contactor. There's our defrost controller, complete with blinking lights to let us know what's going on. We don't need that though, because we look at the top here. You see that one is bent just slightly upward. So we know that it is in fact bad. The bad thing is I don't have a 67.5. I carry mostly by fives because that's the most common one. I don't have 7.5, especially in a 60. So to run out and go buy one. We have everything hooked back up. We have our red wire here, which is common. Heading back down to the contactor right here. Uh, basically giving the, the uh, leg to the compressor and to the fan at the same time at the contactor. Sometimes you see them plug the wires up here. Sometimes they'll jump right down to the contactor. We have our Herm, which goes to the Hermetic Compressor, which in this case is a scroll. And then our fans start winding right there, and you can see it heading up there to the fan. All three of these are the fan wire, common, start, and run. You can trace the run back down, you see it's at the contactor, the orange, right here. That's the run for the fan, going up here. Common, start. So check amperage on common. And we can do that to test it out. So everything should be hooked up fine, and we'll go ahead and give it a start. See what happens. Mission accomplished. Fan running. Here our compressor running down in there. We'll give it a few minutes to make sure it's cool and okay. It's cooling down a little bit already, and we'll be good. This is our old capacitor, and you can tell some of the non-electrical ways to tell. You can see the bulge on top. It's slight, but you can see the bulge on top. And under the rim, you can see it's better to feel it, but obviously y'all aren't going to do that. You can see the oils starting to leak out. So, that's a couple of things you can look for. Uh, I don't advise unless you're comfortable looking for these. Alright, we're off to call number two. Uh, call number two is a, another no cool uh, this one's an old Heil that's uh, kind of on death's door, so I'll, I'll be curious what exactly is the failure on this one. Homeowners, not home, so either we're going to have to jump it off and see what's going on, or maybe it'll show on a visual inspection. Maybe it's just another capacitor, but uh, we'll check and see. Uh, never know with this one. It's, it's, it's a beater. It's been around the block. All right, here's our high-efficiency Heils from yesteryear. It's from the early 90s. Uh, I actually put a lot of these style in back when I first came to work. Uh, my father was a high oil dealer back then. But this one here, got a whole bunch of junk in here. Defrost board, uh, delay timer right there, uh, double pin, oh, double pin, double pull, double throw. Uh, another relay over here. Gosh, the contactor. I put in a new contactor because I had a problem. Then the capacitor, and it looks like to me we have another bullish capacitor. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the contactor down and see if the motor starts. Uh, I'll take out the guesswork. Nope. Capacitor is shot, and that's probably all we have left, or all we have to do here. Uh, which is good because I don't want it to have to run down there and hotwire it because it takes a while and she's involved and 
it's been a pretty busy few weeks, so I'd like to go ahead and get past this. All right, let's go ahead and change that capacitor and move on. Our old capacitor is over there on the ground now. Uh, it was had oil on it and it's a con, concave top, so it's pretty bad. And got our new one in. We're about to test it the same way we did before by depressing the contactor. Let's see what happens. And we have fan and compressor. We are good to go. <laughs> Sounds good. I thought that compressor's doing fine. <laughs> Alright, I have my uh, hard start potential relay in there. That's the second capacitor we've had in here in two years, and the compressor had a hard time starting, as I recall anyway, in the past. Alright, we have a train package unit, and uh, it had no activity whatsoever on it. So, what I did. You can see it's on right now, but it had low, low voltage power before. I had a problem with this particular fan relay going bad, so I disconnected it, turned the power back on. Have a little resettable fuse here, and of course it uh, stayed on. So we have a shorter fan relay. <coughs> uh, and I actually replaced this one before a few years ago, but there was a storm, so that could have caused it, or down here in the low voltage compartment, there's a bunch of water, so I mean, that's not going to help anything. But I'll have to go pick one of these up and replace it. There's a the defrost board, star capacitor, star relay. There's a run, uh, separate run cap for the fan and for the compressor. It's a good idea. Uh, transformer tucked away. Uh, that's about it. I'm gonna go get a replacement capacitor from DNL Parts and a replacement uh, relay from DNL Parts and come back here and put it on. Okay, there's our new relay all in place, and you see. Bunch of low voltage wires on the side and a couple high voltage and that basically just breaks power to the fan motor itself and you choose up here which speed you're going to use for the indoor fan <laughs> uh, as for the low voltage on the side uh, the diagram here will show you best the top you have a blue and actually it's down here it's the common from low voltage field connection which is down here field connection is where you make your wire duct connection uh, the second one down you see is a black wire, and that would be our green. Well, it says green, but it's not green on here. From low voltage field connection. Uh, then we go up here. We have uh, a third one down. It's an orange wire here on the side, and that is the uh, WH slash J to the heater plug connection, which comes up up in this area. And then we have our two blues, which is another common connection. You can see their jumper together, and at the bottom is the red, and that is from the transformer. So we're gonna plug it back in and see what happens. Basically, this is just a delay timer for a fan. So that's it. And there's our operation and checkout and everything like that. You can follow along and wire it up, and hopefully we'll be good to go. Okay, I replaced my relay, but the thermostat also. Uh, been affected and it was bad, so I replaced it with one of my favorites, the Focus Pro 5000. Real basic stat fan on, fan off, cool on. Has its own built in delay. You can range from no delay all the way up to five minutes. It can be for heat pumps, gas, all sorts of different systems as long as they're too heat, too, heat, too cool or less. It's been a good stat. I've uh, enjoyed these. And only uh, had problems with maybe one or two of them out of hundreds and hundreds of them. So we've, well, I've really liked this one. So we're about to turn it back on. Hopefully we'll be good to go. All right, the unit's all happy, all done, new thermostat. And we are good to go.